How much do you like the food, Vivi? Fully so much. Oh my gosh, she loves it. You really liked those scrambled eggs, didn't you? I'm aware that I'm overeating, but I'm not able to stop myself. What the heck is going on? Can you help me with some awareness of what is happening? What a great question, Jay. I get it. Totally understand. I've had that many times in my life. I understand that. First of all, I want to offer you not to stop yourself. I want it to be totally allowed. Right? I want to just play with the idea of what if it was totally allowed? Because I want to point out that stopping yourself isn't working. So if you think it's totally allowed and you go, well, then I'll just eat and eat and eat. Well, I just want to point out stopping yourself isn't working. And the reason that is, is because you're accessing a consciousness that's higher than your control. And what it's trying to do is purge your controller. And your controller is the one that's saying stop. And your other controller is saying F you to the stop right? So you have one energy that's saying stop, and then you have another energy of control that's rebelling against your rules, that's rebelling against your shame. And one of the things I've been talking about lately is choices over rules. The more we have rules in this time, the more we rebel against the rules that we create, right? So if you're on a frequency where you're in the now, but you have some pattern that's trying to control everything, you also have a you that's tired of the shame and the rules, and you feel like rebelling against the rules that you created. So if you have a part of you that says, you cannot blah, 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 you cannot watch porn, you cannot eat muffins, you cannot date that person, you cannot whatever, you cannot fall in love, you cannot whatever, right? You will have a shame wall on top of you that is now a prison that you can't access any freedom because you feel this prison on top of you, right? So this rule that you can't is causing you to go screw you to it because the first thing I got to do to get anywhere is to find my freedom. So you get out of it by rebelling against it. So when it says don't eat, then you come up with, I'm going to do what I want. It's fine. And then you overeat, right? You eat more than your body wants, right? Now, I'm not saying so the solution is to just do that, but I am saying wait till you access a frequency of allowed to, where instead of you just being in a wall of shame that this is what I can't do, this is, you notice how there's no possibility for a new life in a world of this is what I can't do, this is what I can't do. There's no, there's no new possibilities, there's no freedom, there's no higher you, there's no allowed, right? And if you're just like, you better not do this, you better not do this, you don't feel any liberation, you don't know anything higher, you don't know anything freer. So one of the things this time is trying to move you to is a world of choices over rules. Rules are an old, old dichotomy, di di dichotomy, the di dichotomy. <laughs> di you get what I'm saying. Rules are a thing that tell you what you can't do. That worked in an old world, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Rules worked in the 50s because you had no guidance of what you're supposed to do. The same type of callings weren't happening. It was just get a job, get out of the Great Depression, get in line for bread before that, right? Like this is the old way. Back then, the consciousness was just literally like, just get what you need, do the right thing, get in a relationship, get that locked down. It's not about your evolution in that time, at least through your heart. It definitely is about evolution as the collective, but out of victim consciousness into achiever, whatever. And in that, the highest you know is rules. We got it. We need rules were necessary at one point, right? Rules were necessary for humanity. But at one point, when you're at a place of choices, you see a bunch of choices. And at one point, overeating would be a lower choice because comparatively, your soul's expansion, your freedom, all of those things are trying to happen. So while that's trying to happen, you have another you that would stop you from following this. That's trying to die right now. So the reason that you're, you're having a hard time is you're trying to use a pattern of the past to orchestrate this new consciousness. And that pattern of the past is trying to die because it no longer serves you. 
especially you, Jay, you're this incredible, think about this. I know who Jay is. She's an incredible artist. Like imagine if you were trying to do your art through rules versus your creativity. Imagine if the art was, I don't know what I'm painting, but I just cannot use red. Do not use red or blue, but there's no like, you just feel this shame on you. You feel this kind of, I can't, and that stifles everything, right? There was a study one time. I don't know the specifics of the study. We can find it and find what it truly is, but I'm just going to tell you the, the essence of what the study was, was they wanted to know what would happen is if they incentivize different employees to work. Basically, if we add whatever number it was, $1,000 to their paycheck next week, if they do their job really well, what would happen? Now, check this out. The ones that had just janitorial jobs or things that that were a little more just doing and not everything is, of course, creative. But if it wasn't an art or creative or copywriting or, you know, you, it was just doing that, like you're, you're sweeping, you know, you're whatever, sawing something, just kind of doing something to do right? Those people got the job done. If it was just a physical job, right? Right. Those people got the job done and got the extra thousand. But the people who were artistic, the people who were needing their creativity, their ability to write a song, their ability, whatever, if they were incentivized, their, their uh, productivity slipped. In other words, rules or, or even any type of incentive or whatever pressure cut off their creativity. It cut off their flow. It cut off their art. It cut off everything, right? So pressure is hard for artists. And any person who's here is an artist. You're an artist at life though. See, Jay, you got to bring the same art that you bring to your sculptures to life. We're here to learn how to be an artist in life. You know, what type of body is trying to form through you versus if you had this kind of, you know, warden in your head that says it needs to be this way, it needs to be this way, don't do this, don't do this. What type of art is trying to come through in your creativity, in your soul, in your relationships? What type of new world is trying to birth through you? What type of new world? See, Often we're trying to create an old world when you have the capacity to create a new world. What type of new world wants to birth through you that you can't see because you're still moving from a world of rules? And, and Jay, your body has connected to a frequency that's higher that, that doesn't want the old warden on top of you. So what happens if you just said, okay, you can eat what you want. And maybe for a few days, you'd really overeat to test it. Eventually you'd get bored. Do you know that? Eventually you get bored of, of how free you are. And then you'd be free and you'd get bored of, okay, overeating isn't doing it for me. Right? So but but Jay says, I'm seven pounds up. But do you hear how that matters? Do you hear those judgment on it? Imagine if we just were more excited about, like, at this level of creativity, I'm going to give you an equivalent. If someone is an artist at creating and they're being very abundant and they're making a lot of money, if they're budgeting, which would be the financial equivalent of weighing yourself every day, they'd be cutting off their abundance too, right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that too much. I, th I think you're trying to birth a world right now that's bigger. Budgeting can be good if you're in massive debt and you need to get yourself up a little bit. And, and weighing yourself can be good if, you, if you've been just totally out of control in massive victim and going up, going up, going up, going up. But the level of Jay's question makes me feel like she's in a world that's trying to get her to follow her heart more. It's trying to get her to follow her soul and, and eat based on connection to source and fast based on connection to source and eat what food based on connection to source versus you 
have to not, because that could be your mom's old pattern or your dad's old pattern still stuck in your body, shaming you for overeating. And then if it's shamed, what do you have to do? You have to say F you to it and get out of it, right? By overeating, because you're under the illusion, you're not loved if you overeat. So you fix that by overeating. Anything that, check this out, anything that you're under the illusion you're not truly loved if you don't do, right? Often, not always, you will rebel against it because you need to feel like you're truly loved. You'll rebel against it and still do it to break that rule. So if you have a rule on yourself that you can't overeat, right? Then you are convinced I'm not loved if I gain weight right? So what do you have to do? You have to go, I'm going to gain weight to undo that rule because otherwise your love is conditional. I'm only loved if I'm really fit. I'm only loved if I ate what the magazines say I'm supposed to look like. Do you get what I'm saying? So your love is conditional and Jay, you're here to learn unconditional love. So you starting with, and people, that's not me saying, so let's just keep gaining weight, right? If it, it, you get what I'm saying, it, it's not saying let's aim for gaining weight. It's, it's see that you're still alive and you're still loved. Even if you do it, if you start to bring that in and you understand you're loved, even if you overeat, you might not choose eventually, you might just get bored of overeating, right? That's, that's the difference is like, you just might be like, okay, I'm allowed to do whatever I want, Right you probably eventually would undo the shame and just choose that because you're loved, now what would you love to have? And there's a level where you go, I'd love that donut, but I'd love love not just to be hot for whatever, to look good to society. Maybe that's also a reason we're trying to get fit is because I don't want to be shamed or I want to look good to someone else. But what if I just go, I'd love to have that donut but I'd really love, and we have this two worlds, right? I'd love and I'd really love. I'd love that donut, but I'd really love to feel the ultimate level of health because I just choose that instead of I can't have the donut, right? That, that world of the, donut, the, the shame doesn't even know about the ultimate health version of you. It doesn't even, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's just going, don't do, don't do. I don't even quite know why. I don't even have an outcome that I want. I just have an outcome I don't want. So don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, right? And that's all you can see. So we, you know, we really just picture, first of all, what do I want? And instead of just saying, I want this body, say, I want to know I'm loved no matter what, because that's what you're seeking. And if you go, oh, I'm not loved if, if I'm, if I get to the, I'm only loved conditionally if I get my body to X, then you also are going to secretly, unconsciously have a rebellion against that because it's conditional love anyway. If you're only in a place where you're loved conditionally based on what you eat, and even if you get your body there, you're now in this conditional love that's not shamed by a parent, judged by a spouse or whatever, you know, then then you're going to also need to break out of it because you're going to always know there's a deeper love. So you're trying to jam yourself into a conditional love that the ego wants because you deep down feel there's bigger, right? Jay says, I'm crying and happy at the same time. So instead of aiming for the conditional love of a healthy body, aim for the unconditional love of all that is. And then once you realize you're truly loved, you might not want to eat badly because you're truly loved. You just feel love. You just eventually might just say, that pizza doesn't call to me. I'm just feeling the connection of the now. Maybe I just feel like a couple grapes. Maybe I just feel like having water tonight. Maybe I just, I'm going to go to bed early. Maybe I'm going to get more sleep just to match the level of love that I feel in the now. So what do we get from that? Your ego wants conditional love, wants ego love, wants other people's approval, right? Sebastian says, how do we get to feeling truly loved? That starts in the now. So Jay, 
your new work is to be in the now. And when you catch your ego going, I got to strategize my eating, which that strategy will be met with a rebellion. Just be here. Just feel your breath. Just take a deep breath in. Feel loved. Maybe from this place, you'll feel enough love. You'll just want to go for a hike or do some push-ups or just even eat ice cream. And then eventually patterns that no longer serve you will die. The repressor of the food will die. The, the, the overeater will die. The fix, the overeater is fixing that it's not loved. And the judgment of that is fixing that it's not loved. The overeater and the judgment are the same pattern. It's just the, the, there's a flip to the pattern. You notice the same time when you don't want anyone's help, you're also the same person that's annoyed that nobody helps you. Like when people are like, no one helps me and don't help me, right? Whatever your pattern is of what you as your big thing, you also have a major other side to it, right? So I'm going to overeat is always met with, I need to, I need to shame myself for overeating. I hope that helps, Jay. That feels like the most thorough I can answer that. Awesome. You're here to find con unconditional love and receive that it's already here. So you're totally free. Deep breath in. Release it. Isn't that exciting? That felt good. So th that works with money too, everybody. Why, when I make enough money, do you notice this? You make enough money and then you sabotage it. Does anyone have that? I need to make more money. I need to make more money. I need to make more money. And then you get it and then you overspend. Why is that? Because you just got conditional love. I'm loved because I have enough money. Basically, I've escaped my parents' shame or whatever, right? So because I have that, I need to get out of it because I'm conditionally loved. If you go, I need the now, I connect to the now, I receive the now, and you keep working on that and be with that. No more chase, no more conditional love, right? With relationships too. I need the ultimate relationship. I need a relationship. You'll get it and you'll sabotage it, right? Has anyone had that? I have to be with a person and you get a real person and you go, what does this person want from me? There has to be a trick here. They're not the real thing. Why do you sabotage the thing you want so much? Because you've tricked yourself into thinking that that's enough love, but you have an understanding now that you need unconditional love. In the 50s, that might've worked. We were not as connected to the now right? We weren't as if I was around in the 50s.